Well, welcome everyone uh, to tonight's presentation brought to you by the Public Climate Action Team. And if you're not familiar with us, we are a nonpartisan group of volunteers concerned about climate change. And we bring you various topics on the last Tuesday of each month. So uh, tonight our topic, I'm sorry, next month, our topic is going to be water-wise gardening. That's going to be on Tuesday, April 26th. And that is going to be presented by Solana Center, which always gives great community presentations. They're pretty much professionals at what they do. So uh, look forward to seeing everyone then. Tonight, we have another great presentation also related to gardens, which is a great topic as we head into spring. And we have Karen Hansen, who's a volunteer with the Sierra Club and the Santa Margarita uh, Group Butterfly Garden Project. So pollinators assist plants in reproducing and sustain our ecosystems. And of course, attracting them is something we all can easily do. So many times we have topics and it feels like it's too large for any one of us to actually make a dent in, even though we're interested in it. But this topic is something we can definitely all do no matter where we are, where we really live. So um, it's something we can take action with climate change and do locally. So with that, let me go ahead and turn it over to Karen. Hello, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, okay. Um, I'm Karen Hansen. I have a degree in biological science from UC Berkeley many years ago, <laughs> too many. And um, I joined the Sierra Club, oh, probably about five years ago um, because it was the it was a local group of conservationists. Um, I got interested in this when I was watching a video on hummingbirds. And the lady who was giving it mentioned the word botanical garden. And I thought, we don't have a botanical garden in this area. Why not? I mean, you know, and we cover about seven cities here. So I decided we needed a botanical garden in this area. I'm going to do it. So I talked to the Sierra Club and, we, and I started contacting the various cities. And the first one that came on board I thought, thought the idea was good was the city of Menifee. Oh, this, this is a picture of a butterfly garden that's fully formed. It's probably been there a couple of years. And that's what we wanna see in all the parks. So uh, the next slide. Okay, this is our first park that we got into, Spirit Park in Menifee. And I live in Menifee, so it's right down the road from me. Um, next, next one. Hello. Anyway, um, we had a meeting with them and they have, they had an area that wasn't being used. Four large circles, each circle measured 21 feet in diameter. And they wanted to put in a butterfly garden. So I met with the people who know a lot about botany. We came up with a list of plants for each circle, which these circles are supposed to show. <laughs> Come on. It, whoever's advancing <laughs> oh, there the slide, there you go. Okay. It might have had automation on yeah, it. So this is one of the circles. And uh, when I, I knew when they were going to plant it, so I ran out there, took pictures. And what they were doing, they, were, they had just finished planting these plants, and they were putting a wire fencing around it to protect it from uh, gophers and squirrels and rabbits that live around there. So... This is our very first one. I was very excited about it. Okay, the next one. Okay, um, after that, the city of um, Temecula contacted us and they wanted to put one in this park, which is a much bigger park, much bigger area for us. They gave us an area of about 100 feet by 60 feet. So it is much bigger. Um, we, 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 we uh, have a grant and we bought a bunch of plants for it. And where's the picture? <laughs> yeah. 
So we planted, uh, no, I have to go back. We, we planted, there it is. It's, it's quite a big area. So we planted lots of plants. I wish they had planted them closer, but I'm not gonna argue. We, we got some plants in. And um, we're gonna add a, a large sign in about a month. Um, we have a, a mixture of host plants for the caterpillars and um, nectar plants for the butterflies. Um, there's a walkway through this and it's covered in bark. When this, this before it had a, a, a lot of grass <clears throat> and the temecula is trying to get rid of all this grassy stuff they have in the parks. So when they replace this with the native plants, which are uh, drought tolerant and the, they mulch, it cut down on the watering by 90%. So if you're doing something with watering, put in native plants, that'll solve it right there. Okay, the next one. Um, let's see, where is it? hold on. Um, this is the life cycle of a monarch. You, you're probably all familiar with it. Um, we, uh, the butterflies have all sorts of life cycles. They don't all follow this one. Uh, sometimes they can uh, go into dormancy for years. So, but this is an example of a butterfly. It's very popular. Uh, it's host plant, which is the plant for the um, caterpillar is the milkweed. And so a lot of people have been planting milkweeds because they, it's gotten in the news quite a bit. So she'll plant um, eggs underneath the leaves in the milkweed. And about uh, three or four days later, out popped a little teeny tiny um, uh, caterpillar. And it goes through about five molts until it reaches um, a good, pretty good size, um, about the size of your finger. Yeah, this right here. Um, when the first time I planted milkweed in my garden, I watered it and watered it and, you know, took care of it. And then one day I looked over and there weren't any leaves on it. And I thought, what happened to my milkweed? And I went over there and there were 10 caterpillars on the ground. They had cleaned out the whole kitten caboodle leaves. So I was really proud of myself. So I've been, I've been uh, sending monarch butterflies from my home ever since. <clears throat> but this will go, like I said, it'll go through about five molts. Uh, several weeks later, it'll turn into a chrysalis, which is this little pupa down here. And if you get a chance to watch them, you'll see at the end that it, you can see the butterfly forming inside, which is pretty interesting. Uh, and then it'll uh, chew its way out and it'll spend a, a couple of hours drying its leaves and expanding, filling its leaves with fluid. And then it'll just take off and go on its main voyage. So it's, it's a lot of fun. I've watched the whole thing several times. Okay, the next one. Okay. Now they have, obviously they have different sensory um, perceptions than we do. For instance, uh, their feet is what, is used for taste. So when they land on a flower like this, they're actually tasting the plant to, you know, to uh, navigate toward the nectar. Um, the, they have little holes on the, on the side of the abdomen and those are used for breathing. I think those are called spiracles. Um, the antenna uh, is used for smell. They have compound, compound eyes and they can see very well, especially color. They have six legs, uh, but then they have these little bumps, as you can see on the abdomen, which are called prolegs. And those use, are used to help the butterfly kind of attach and hold on to its surface. It has two, four wings like this is and two hind wings, and they can, they can uh, fly separately. The proboscis is uh, like a curled uh, drinking straw, which as you know, it goes into the flower and drinks up the nectar 
they don't really have poop because they have a liquid diet. So their poop is uh, liquid waste, basically. Okay, next one. So here's your narrow leaf milkweed in all its forms. Here's, yeah, these, these caterpillars get pretty big and they're, they're quite interesting. And, and if you watch them, they'll just sit there and eat and eat and eat. That's all they do. And then this is your butterfly that's, that's on the milkweed. Okay, the next one, gardening. Now, how many of you, did you, do you have butterfly gardens in your area? This is a good way to do it. You get the plants that you need and we'll cover that later. And it, the plant should tell you how tall it's gonna get how wide it's going to get. So you want to put the short ones in front, the tall ones in back, and you want to make sure that the ones that don't get very wide, um, uh, you, you mark it. So if you put a, a one that does get very wide next to it, they don't, they don't grow into each other. And that's very important. So this one is done very carefully and correctly. Um, you want to cluster the uh, host plants together, and I've done, and that's there's a good reason. If the caterpillar runs, if the caterpillars run out of food, they can very easily go to the next one if it's next door and start eating that one. And I've 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 experienced that in my own garden. So make sure you plant like three together, and if you have a big area, plant three here and three there and three there. And then with the plants, you cluster them by color and by species because you want the, the butterfly wants to see a group of pink over here, maybe, and purple over here. They can just see it better and it's more attractive to them. Okay, the next one. Um, okay, planting. Once you've got your plants from the nursery, you uh, water the, the plant a lot and you also water their hole a lot and the hole should be dug twice as wide and about half as deep so you don't so the plant sticks up slightly from the ground um and you you like i said you soak the plant and you soak the ground and then the next day you pull it out of its container and you put it on the the middle ground here so it's sticking up above the line and you fill it in with soil and you fill that over on the top with the uh, bark and uh, water it pretty well. I usually water mine at least pretty good for three weeks, um, especially in this area. It's, it's hot, very simple. Okay, and go ahead. Okay, now we've come to Cal State. I don't know if you are familiar with Calscape, but it's put out by the California Native Plant Society. It's a great website. Um, I wanted to show this picture. As you can see, there are eight, almost 8,000 native plants in California. Uh, if we go to the up there, like if you clicked on butterflies, it would give you a list of all the butterflies, which I think there's what? 1600 or something. So we're going to go to the garden planner and start planning a garden. They ask you four questions, very simple questions. What city do you live in? So we put in Fallbrook for this presentation. The second, which type of uh, garden style would you choose? And I always choose California natural because the other one is, you know, I'm not into a formal garden sort of thing. And the first one looks a little bit too empty. The third one is, if you're, if you're gonna put it in partial sun, then click that one. But if, if you can, try to get your garden in full sun for the butterflies. That's the third question. The fourth question, who do you wanna help? I always choose butterflies, birds, and low water. I don't choose deer because we don't have any deer in here. So um, next, next one, here's your answers on the left side and bingo, it, it comes up with all of these uh, plants that meet your criteria. 
Now there's a lot more than four. There's about 30 in here. We just grabbed the first four. And, and this gives you a lot of information. Full sun, low water, what colors, and the important one, the measurements. Three feet high, one to three feet wide. These are the critters that it helps. Hummingbirds, birds, butterflies, and I think that's a caterpillar, but it might be a bee. Okay, the next one. When you click on hummingbird sage, the first one, it brings up a whole page on hummingbird sages. So here's your picture. Here is where they're native. And down here, okay, here's, a, here's all five of these wildlife that it supports, including the caterpillar, which means it's a host plant. So and if you look underneath that, it says butterflies and moths hosted, and they lived, list seven of them, seven likely, two confirmed. Above that, what kind of plant it is, the size, the form it takes, uh, it's an evergreen, the colors, when it flowers, that's important, winter, spring, and summer, because you want to have uh, flowers year round. Um, let's see. This doesn't show it, but if you went down the page of this particular one, you could actually print out a little uh, plant sign. But we, I didn't get that. Okay, next one. So this is some of the butterflies with some of the, um, with, with the host plant listed and what the caterpillar looks like. So Mark, there's the milkweed. Viceroy, there's Aspen and Willow. Um, they have some pretty interesting looking little caterpillars. Um, the American Lady, I thought that one was really interesting. And yet it had the, it can uh, host on sunflowers, pusito, ironweed, silver, brocade, and pearly everlasting mallow. So, I've, you know, I think those are really interesting. Okay, butterfly for kids. If you're interested in butterflies, especially if you're a teacher, that's a good one. Um, even though it says it's for kids, it's got a lot of information in it. This is, um, if you scan this here, you'll go to our website and we have about 15 pages of plants you can choose from, um, landscape designs, which I didn't see any of my landscape, oh well. So anyway, oh, then also, you can uh, copy this and it'll take you to the same place. So we didn't, I didn't see any of our landscape designs in here, but so that's it. Short presentation. Um, discussion? Anybody have any questions? Karen, I do. Um, I'm curious to know about fire resistance. Oh, fire resistant to milkweed or some fire resistance? Yeah. That I don't know about. You mean for the garden? Yeah, just because, you know, certainly in Fallbrook and other areas in Southern California, we're always very concerned about fire. Yeah, Maybe. that I don't know about. Okay. Sorry. I'm wondering. It's a good question, though, especially these days. Yeah. Joy, could you put the uh, page just before the sec the last page? There was an, uh, an a URL with the Sierra Club, and it whizzed by faster than I could catch it. The second last slide. That's the one, yes. In, in, the, uh, in the website, we show three different landscapes you can choose from. And we've, we've uh, shown the, what plants would go in there. So I would take a look at those because those are, are pretty interesting. And then we have a whole list of plants um, divided by size. So we have short, narrow, medium, um, uh, large plants, 
And that's very, that's very useful if, you, if you're going to um, start a, a butterfly garden. We're also gonna um, be approaching schools because there's a lot of schools that are interested in doing this. I have a question. Uh, where do you buy these? Where's the best place to, uh, what yeah, nursery? There's a whole lot of stuff missing here. Sorry. Okay. Um, there's four different ones. Four different one. Okay, you're in Fallbrook. There's there's Myrtle Creek in your area. No, I'm in I'm in Encinitas, but I, okay. But then, wherever, uh, there's yeah. also Tree of Life on Highway 74. Are you familiar with that one? No, no, it's not. Okay, go to uh, scan the QR or go to that website and again it gives you a list of four of them. Um, up here we use. Louise Nursery, which has a huge section of just native plants. Oh, Musa nice. Creek, which is in uh, near Escondido, Musa Creek. Um, they wholesale and retail. So in your area, I think Tree of Life might be the closest. Well, I'm, I'm in Encinitas. So. Yeah. But that's um, on 74 going into um, the coast, like ocean signs. Seventy-four. I'm not. Goes to San Juan, oh, that's pretty far uh, from here, San Juan. Gary, Gary, yeah. I I did a butterfly garden in my. These are some of my plants. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and I, Musa Creek has an online website, yes. and I've ordered hundreds of plants from them, native California hmm. plants, and they'll they. They deliver to a lot of local nurseries. Yes, so, they do. Yes. Yeah. So if you go to their website, you type in your zip code, and they'll tell you the closest nursery that they can deliver to. Because they deliver to Grand Jettos in Fallbrook. So it was real easy for me. I live in Fallbrook. And there's, uh -huh. given you're in Encinitas, there's probably a local nursery that they drop their plants off at and you just i ordered like 30 plants online and Pretty then good. my husband gets goes and picks them up <laughs> and 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 i i they're, they're beautiful plants you'll be really happy we have a grand Jettos close by oh maybe that that one maybe they do that one too what was that website again you mentioned it's moosa creek m-o-o-s-a-c-r E E K dot com. Okay. Yes. I, I, have you been there? It's very interesting. It's no, huge. They do yeah, it's a, a huge lot of operation. Also, they, you know, they have gobs of plants, just row after row. Hmm. Very interesting. What? Well, tell, tell me again. I didn't get a good uh, write down of the name of the website. Musa Creek. M O O S A. Musa. Oh, Musa. Okay. Creek, and it's Creek. dot com, huh? Okay. Maybe you could type it in the chat too. Oh, yeah. Musa Creek dot com. Okay. I have a question about milkweed. Okay. Couple questions. Good. Um, Good. First question: Do uh, butterflies other than monarchs also eat milkweed, or is that strictly their niche? No, the queen butterfly, which looks a whole lot like them, uh -huh. uh, also is, uh, uses milkweed as, as a host plant. I think milkweed is used by quite a few butterflies. Quite a few. Okay, good. But you might go to, you might go to um, Calscape, which is California Landscape Put Together, .org. Click on the thing that says butterfly and just, you know, or, or, or the plant, milkweed. And see what comes up, and see see what what butterflies come up. You can do a whole lot on that site. So okay. check that out. But I understand there's something like three hundred. No, there's a lot of butterflies that use that. It's not wasted. No. So my other question is: um, I learned somewhere, or thought I learned, that the um, the milkweed that you you can buy in local nurseries is not the one that they prefer. Correct. And I ordered Correct. some seeds from, I think, Musa Creek, which I haven't planted yet. Yes. Um, so that is true that we, we would prefer, they would prefer um, different kinds of milkweed than we're buying locally? Probably. Okay. Um, 
I've been told by people who are, you know, have PhDs in this stuff that the narrow leaf milkweed is the one you want. That one does the best. But there's also woolly milkweed. There's a snowy, I think it's snowy milkweed is good. They don't want you to use tropical milkweed. It's not native to this area. And um, the butterflies can get a disease from it. Oh. If, it, if it's not cut back every year. It tends yeah. not, it tends, the, the milkweeds native here tend to die back that once a year. And then they come back. <laughs> but the tropical does not. And then it starts getting a disease and passing it on to the caterpillar. So the caterpillar doesn't make it. So mm. don't use tropical. They don't want you to use tropical. Mm. Narrow leaf. Yeah, narrow leaf is the one that I've been told, get that one. Or so that's the only one I use in my yard. Okay. Or the one you said. So I, you... I, I pulled up the narrow leaf on Calscape, uh -huh. and it says that the two confirmed that are hosted by the... Um, narrow leaf milkweed is the monarch and the queen. Yeah, the queen, and then yeah. There, there's four likely, the Isabella tiger moth, the Cleo tiger moth, the hitched arches, and the Eucales zella. Oh, okay. And they don't have another name other than that for that one. Yeah, if so. nothing else, Take a look at Calscape and get used to it because it's just got tons of information on it, how to take care of things, what, what plants they really um, recommend. What about any pest problems with uh, any of these plants that be aware of? They don't, you know, you don't want to use any pesticide, herbicide, right. nothing. If you get pests on them, like milkweed, you have to, you're supposed to squeeze them off with your fingertips. Or uh, wash them off with water. Like um, aphids I mean. and that kind of thing. Or oh, aphids. I've got a comment. I'm, I'm a member of the California Native Plant Society. Oh, good. And um, my colleagues, they're just rec. So the native milkweed does tend to get aphids, but yes. the birds get them. Birds get them. The problem with trying to kill off the aphids is that if you have monarch eggs on your milkweed, they're hard to see. A little hard to tell whether you've got an aphid or a, aphid or a monarch oh. seed. But if you just leave them, you're feeding the birds. And the birds, none of my milkweeds have died. I haven't seen the aphids anymore, anywhere else. They just hang oh. out on the milkweed. And then I come out and they're gone because the birds got them. So you can, oh. you can basically just ignore their, I think they're called, oh, I can't think of the kind of aphids they are. But just ignore them because the birds will come and get them for you. The ants won't try <laughs> to find them. And then you're, and then I did see a cocoon, not a, is that a cocoon? I saw a cocoon on my other plants, which I'm assuming was a monarch cocoon. I haven't, yeah. So, but the native plant people usually just leave the aphids and wait for the mm -hmm. birds. Mm -hmm. I know that's kind of, that's, I do old fashioned gardening where you would go after all your aphids because I have some roses, but the native plants are wonderful. You just ignore them. And they, mm. you don't water them. I have, you don't have to water them. You just ignore them and they grow and bloom and look beautiful. Oh. I've yeah. been taking them off with my fingertips. Oh, you have? Okay. Yeah. How about tweezers? <laughs> with a magnifying glass. <laughs> if you're a surgeon, otherwise use your finger. <laughs> so how many, how many um, monarchs do you think you've raised? Me, yeah, I I haven't I I've been I've been mostly planting native plants, and so I haven't had time to enjoy the garden. Oh, because <laughs> I think I've put two hundred in already, and That's so terrific. Yeah, so That's just so great. I, I'm finally getting to the point where I filled up the empty space, and I I can sit out there and I, and enjoy it and, and watch what's going on. <laughs> do you I, have, like I, said, do I only you have a lot of do you have a lot of flowers blooming year round? Do you have that? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. great. Yeah, and I also found out which ones look but ugly in August. <laughs> and, and 
So <laughs> and which ones look, yeah, if anybody wants to ask me what looks good all year long, Ceanothus and Manzanita plants, they look good all the time. Um, Rosalie. And they bloom. And Ceanothus does, I don't know, I know it feeds monarchs. I don't know if it hosts any. We'd have to look on Kelscape. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. But Ceanothus is a great plant. Rosalie, can I interrupt for a minute? Would it be too much to ask you if we could come see your garden? <laughs> oh, I'd be happy sometime. Um, Joy, you can get my contact info from Joy. Okay. Okay. Because I made a lot of you. mistakes and I share them with people. I, I share, I go, this worked. This is, you know, this, this thing looks ugly, you know, and I let people know. <laughs> Ceanosis is great if you can get that one. <laughs> what about California? But what about the buckwheats? Have you, have you had good time? I just, I just planted those and I, 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 don't know what they're going to look like in I I think they looked good in the fall but I I want to wait till this fall, fall to see I know what was have you planted any because I I I, I planted California buckwheat and red what buckwheat which is a little smaller yeah but they have great flowers on top so they're yeah they're, they're yeah. very good nectar plants uh, one one plant I've had trouble with is Lantana, which is a wonderful nectar plant, but when it gets cold, it just dies. <laughs> yeah. It, and you, and so you have to cut it way back and hope you get a, a couple of little sprouts in there. But I, I can't recommend Lantana anymore, even though it's this great nectar plant. So. Deanna, can I interrupt? Yeah. Can you hear me? Um, I have a hillside and I have a lot of succulents on it but I wanted to add some natives. Can I go ahead and mix them? Would that be okay? I, I can answer that because I have my natives. It, if they have similar water requirements, it'll right. work. If you know, if, they, if, if you're most, my native plants, the ones I have on my hillside, I don't water them, period. Right. We, we watered them to install them. And then Mother Nature came and rained in fall and winter. And then I never watered them. So it depends on how often you water your succulents. And you need to match the water needs. Okay. Okay. This way I would have some nice color when the natives are more drab. Yeah. Also, yeah. was what I was thinking. Okay. Thank you. So you're muted. Terry, are you there? Did you say Terry? Yes, I'm, yeah. I'm here. Oh, here. No, Terry. Terry Garner. Oh, oh, oh you say yes. Terry. Oh, um, Terry. So Sorry. I looked up for Fire Smart Landscaping, and it says um, choose fire retardant plant species that resist ignition such as rock rose, ice plant, there we go, and aloe. Um, shrubs such as hedging roses, bush honeysuckles, current Rosalie Rosalie's making faces at those. I'm making faces, Joy, because um, Greg Rubin, and I think he did it with, uh, he did it with one branch of the military, and they uh -huh. checked on the fire resistance of native plants and there's uh -huh. a lot of but but not everybody's up on it yet mm -hmm. so there's some re i i wish if i can find the video he talked about his research he did with the military and he found out that a native landscape can be very fire resistant and then the ones he installed the homes around burned down but not the ones where he installed his the native plants Hmm. Yeah, and it, part of it is if you do, the, I think he had, he maybe watered them once a month or something to keep them that way. So, um, but not, not everybody, he hasn't, the word hasn't gotten out on it yet, you know, and there, and so pe the 
there's the old thinking, which is what you're reading. And then there's a newer thinking saying this stuff really works and it's fire resistant. So just wanted, I, if I can find that uh, video, I'll send it to you where he presented the results of the research. Maybe we should get him as a speaker. Yeah, we should, because he's really knowledgeable about about that that aspect of it. Can I speak here? Or can you hear me? Yes. Oh, good. This is Claudia. Call, I'm on the John Watson window oh. here. John was just sitting over there telling me something. It's kind of important. He said, when um, you purchase your butterfly plants from a nursery, a commercial nursery, especially someplace like Ace Hardware or Walmart or the big box stores, I got uh, my milkweed at Ace Hardware. The first thing he said you want to do is hose them down really good because yes. they do use insecticide. Yes. Yes. Yeah, because, yeah, because they use, they use herbicide on them, yes. Right. But the ones that sell native plants like the one, you know, like Louise Nursery and Musa Creek, they don't. Good. Well, that's what, um, that's what Tom's sister was telling us, that she won't even buy any plants from Home Depot because Correct. they have insecticide on them. Correct. Exactly. Probably Ace also. You mentioned um, rock rose a bit ago. Um, they're a native and they're really, really happy around here. You get a lot of uh, coverage and a lot of flowers. Do you also get butterflies with, with rock rose? I don't know. Um, we, we should go to Calscape and, and search it out. Just put the name in. All right. It'll tell you. It'll, you know, give you the, that wildlife support thing. Good, because I've committed a lot of area to those. <laughs> oh, rock rose, huh? Rock rose. Okay. Yeah, and check to see if they're native because my recollection is that they're not. Oh, I, I think it might be a like a Mediterranean plant, like around the Mediterranean. So, but check that too. Calscape, if you can't find it on Calscape, it's not native. It's not native, correct. Yeah. So then you have to do a Google search and, and get the information. Yeah, Calflora will, Cal, just to get you confused, there's another site, but yeah, flora. called Calflora, and then it will tell you native to California, not native to California. Yes. The Calscape, yeah, Calscape's the start, great place to start. Mm -hmm. So just to comment on watering, um, when I planted my, my natives and my butterfly plants, I watered them for their first summer. That is, I planted them in the fall, and then I watered them once every couple of weeks through the first summer because they, they, they aren't really established just yet. Correct, correct. And they, they did really well. Someone had said that they, they didn't water them past the fall and the winter, and the, the first summer, it's really important. The other thing is that I did plant some butterfly plants in the spring and early summer, and they did not do well at all. They were natives, and they yeah. didn't do well yeah. at all. Because mine, didn't, they, mine didn't either. Mine didn't yeah. either. They just didn't thrive. It's, it's too hot for them. It's too hot for a new plant. Yep. Yeah, fall, yeah. Is, the, fall, fall is the best time, because I, I made yeah. a mistake and planted some of mine in late March, and lo I lost a lot of those, even though I, you know, but the ones I planted in fall do gangbusters. And yes. even, even this yes. fall with that little bit of rain we got, it was all, all they needed. Yes. Another thing that I did with, with my, uh, my natives and my butterfly plants was I got these sort of mesh gopher thingies. Uh, they're <laughs> gopher cages because I have like 10 100 gophers in my yard I just and I don't want to poison them or trap them or I don't know what to do with them so yes. I'm basically just a live and let live kind of person and, and I put all of my plants in gopher cages and it's it's been it, it was expensive because it costs like ten dollars for four of them or something like that and at a time when you're you're paying for a bunch of expensive plants and and all the rest of it it's just like it's a bunch of extra money but it really really has paid off because my natives 
have thrived. And the gophers are still there, but the, the natives, the natives haven't gotten, uh, basically I put gopher cages on everything and um, my plants are all really thriving, but, um, the, the, and the gophers still make their holes, but there are a lot fewer of them now. So I figure I don't have to run faster than the gophers. I just have to, you know, chase them over to my neighbor's yard. <laughs> I can talk to you about gopher cages. Because you're right, you'll go broke buying a gopher cage for every plant you plant. Um, but you can buy not chicken wire, but aviary wire. Yeah. And yeah, and it's, it's fine enough to keep the gophers out. And you just cut it out and wind them together and make your own. Much cheaper. Um, you'll, your fingers will be sorry, but your wallet will be happy. <laughs> We're sending our gophers across the street from us. Nah. -uh. <laughs> I have some news about rock rose. It, I looked it up. And yes. It came, up, it came up Diablo helianthella. And then I looked up on Google to see if that was the same thing. And yes, it is. Wikipedia says helianthinum, helianthemum is also known as rock rose. So where is it native to? Well, it comes up on Calscape. Oh, it does. As Diab Diablo helianthemum. And Wikipedia says helianthemum is also known as rock rose. Is it, is it yes. native down here or Northern California or where? Up in the mountains or where? Um, well, it says. Well, then it says, well, I don't know. Oh, where is it on? I see what you mean. Where is it native in? Okay, you're right about that. It is native north of here. San okay. Jose, San Francisco, oh, okay. San Mateo, and Fremont. Cooler weather. Yeah. So it is not. I have a question when you're done there. Go ahead. Um, I got a phone call right when you gave the alternative to the gopher cages. Can you repeat that again? What it was? Aviary wire. Aviary. Thank you. Supplies. <laughs> Thank you. Where did uh, you get it again? Um, you may have to look around. Uh, a lot of places sell chicken wire, but aviary wire is finer, finer mesh. Mark, Mark where did you get ours? Mark, you, the local we put ours in aviary. The store has aviary wire, but you can also get it at um, Pinecone. And if they don't have it, they'll order it for you. You want to get it in like two foot wide rolls. And um, if you have some nice special scissors, you can just cut it up with the, those. And, it, you know, you just, form it into a circle and and bend the bottom under and it makes like an 18 inch deep thing that you can stick up above the ground a little bit so that even the rabbits and other animals can't get in from mm -hmm. the top is it galvanized wire or i had my i put in chicken wire kind of a fine chicken wire in a vegetable garden one time and it rusted out pretty quickly <laughs> Well, so even galvanized wire is going to rust out in a couple of years because it, you know, it's the galvanizing is being highly exposed to moisture and things so that you can't expect more than a couple of years. But by then, the plant should be well developed enough so that uh, a, a random gopher who attacks one of them isn't going to be able to do it in. <laughs> yeah. We use the standard, the the ones that I got at, at Lowe's or Home Depot or somewhere. And uh, I've had to dig up a couple of the ones, of plants that didn't survive. And even after a couple of years, the gopher cage is still fine and I've been able to reuse them. And yes, it's way cheaper to make your own, but I had so many other things on my plate at the time trying to coordinate everything. And I just kind of went, ah, so, um, you know, yes, it, it's expensive, but but it's one of those things in the long run, you need to protect those roots somehow because the baby roots, the, the gophers will just destroy them. Mm -hmm. Oh, here I got a picture. Oh, I don't know if this is going to show up. Here's one of mine. 
This one is from the aviary wire Mark got for me. And then there's the Ceanothus in it. A bait, the young Ceanothus, but see it's too protected. Close. Too close. Oh, that, that, well, it, then it, you can't see it. Back it up. Anyway. Hmm. Any more questions? Any more discussion? All right, well, if there are no other questions, uh, we'll go ahead and um, drop off just a little bit earlier. Um, but we certainly appreciate, Karen, all of the information you've given. And I, I think, again, a butterfly garden is something we all can do. So great information, great questions, everyone. Thank you so much. Hey, Karen, thank you. Thank you. More quick thank you. <laughs> okay. And we'll see you. We'll see I'll everyone next question, time. Jerry. Okay. There's another question. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I have one more quick. I'm sorry. What is the best nectar plant then? The use the um, milkweed. That's the is that the, the host, host plant? plant? That's a host plant. Um, What's good for the nectar plants? Go to um, our site if you can, because I have a whole bunch listed. Um, I like I mentioned before. I like um, the buckwheats because they have such a good flowering on top of them. Um, Okay. You want you want to get ones with a, a big cluster of flowers on top. Um, okay. There's there's a um, the red buckwheat and the California buckwheat. Those are the ones I like. Does anyone else have any suggestions for a nectar plant? What's good? Sages. Sage. Yes. Sages. Sages. Yeah. Sages. Uh, yeah. Karen, what was hey Karen? Somebody's asking what was the name of the um, nursery in Menifee that you mentioned? Oh, it's it's a wonderful nursery, Louise Nursery. L O U. Let me see, L O U I E apostrophe S. Louise Nursery. Louise. It's, um, it's on Hodge H A U H A H N, um, and they have a huge selection. We went in there a, several months ago and said. Will you do something with native plants? And she listened and she started bringing in by the hundreds. So they have a whole section, big, huge sign, California native plants. And it's it's really good. That's why I get my plants. There, There's another good place. Um, I can't remember the name of it, but it's off 395, I think in Bonzel or Fallbrook, that kind of specializes in uh, succulents. Hey, Waterwise, I think it's Waterwise Garden. Uh -huh. Uh, uh, but they also have a native plant section. Hmm. Well, I see on your on your website, the Sierra Club Santa Margarita website. You also have black eyed Susan, violet lilac, and California bush sunflower. Yeah, I have sunflower in my garden, but they only have you know they have a little flower up here and a little flower up here. It doesn't have that mass of flowers. That um, that I would be looking for, but we have picture. We have a whole bunch of plants, and we have pictures with them. We have all the information for each plant. What about lavender? I'm not sure. Let's see. I'm not, I'm not sure if that's on the list. Does anyone have any comments about lavender? The butterflies like it, but I don't think it's native. It's a yeah, they'll drink the nectar from it, um, but it's not native. And it's not a host plant um, that I, I'm aware of. It's it, it's not native. It's it's mm. from the Mediterranean. Oh. A lot of our plants came from the Mediterranean because it's a, a similar climate, but yes, uh, the, we bought, Europeans brought them over. They weren't here. Mm -hmm. And so they didn't and the reason people make a big deal out of it is because the plants that were here before colonialization co-evolved with the butterflies. Mm -hmm. Correct. And so, so it's thought that, that they've you know, been hanging out together for 2,000 years 
and have worked things out. And so typically native, it's thought that the native plants are better for the butterflies. Very than, good, that's right. Yeah. Mm. There's a um, desert lavender that's native to the desert. So farther east of here, and it's, I'm looking at the Cowscape website and it supports bees and butterflies, but it yeah. doesn't look like it's native to actually this area right here. Yeah. It is in the Cleveland National. And I don't think it's related to the European lavender either. It's just like they have something called, Cianothus common name is California lilac, but it's mm -hmm. not related to the lilacs that we know from back East. They, it's a common name and sometimes it's, it's not, not related. But yeah, there is a desert, there is that desert lavender that butterflies like. And, it, and I, that you mentioned, Joy. But I don't, I don't think it's related to the English and the French lavender. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. So looking at the, uh, the website for the, um, for the Sierra Club, there's a butterfly garden contest going on and the deadline to enter is two days from now. So if anyone wants to enter, you better, you better go out and take your photos and get your entry in. Um, and, and actually I have to say, it sounds like several people on this call actually have really cool butterfly gardens. Mine's only been in, in place for a couple of years, so it's really not grown up. I mean, I've got like lots of plants, but they, they haven't sort of grown up and gotten all bushy, like, uh, like eventually they're going to do in another year or so maybe. So, so some of the people with, with gorgeous butterfly gardens, you, you guys need to hop to it and, and get entered into the contest. Yeah, we, we have the application online. Um, the deadline uh, for all the entries is the end of May, May 31st. And there's, there's cash prizes. So um, feel free to you know, but most of the people in this area, because they've just started butterfly gardens, there's nothing there, really. You know, there's no no garden yet. It, it takes a while for them to become established, but you guys are ahead of us. Tom's sister is a certified um, monarch butterfly gardener. She's been doing it for probably about five years, I think. Where does she live? Entirely with milk in Fallbrook. Oh, almost entirely with milkweed. Have her, have her um, sign up for the contest. Is the photos for for single photos or or, or group photos or or there's just different varieties of photos of, of, of butterflies? You mean for the contest? Yeah, because it's I know it's a butterfly, but it's like. Well, we want to we want to get two or three pictures of your garden just so we can really get a good look at it, and then we may come out if you know if we're not satisfied, we may come out and visit you, and see what it looks like. And whoever has the best garden, there's cash prizes. Doesn't hurt. Because I, I know my my basil plant a lot of um, different things like to eat it, so I, I, I've um, I've noticed that some of the butterflies have been, been around it. But... I, I need to be up on taking photos, but yeah, good thing I studied photography. Um, I didn't hear the last part. Good, good thing I studied photography. There's um, I I I I took in a photo of a um a cocoon on one of my plants. Uh -huh. But yeah, um, I'll be up on more and more photos. I know you're probably um. Are you just looking for monarch photos or? No, 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 we're just looking for butterfly garden beauty or whatever, you know, something that's established and beautiful. This is not just monarchs, of course not. Uh -uh. Is there extra points for hummingbirds and bees or, or just? <laughs> Those are all pollinators. They, they all, you know, they all count. So They're pollinator photos. Okay, I just opened yeah. up a new section for you all. Yeah, it doesn't good. have to be just butterflies. It, it's that one of my favorite photos is when you see the bee with his tongue out in uh -huh. the plant, and this looks really cool. So, but can can we see the garden from that angle? Can um, we see the garden? Well, sometimes we just zoom in on, on the the plant, but I I, I know I, um um I would have to look at my photos. Some of them are on my Instagram, and, and some of my photos, some camera. 
Yeah. Anyway, take a take a you know a shot where we can see the whole thing and take it from different angles and submit it with your application. So a zoom in and a zoom out would be good. Um, if well, we're looking for what the whole garden looks like, so oh, it's mainly portrait zoom shots. Portrait mainly shots. Zoom right. out, not zoom in. Or, or see scenic shots. I mean, we're, we're not judging by the quality of the picture. We're judging by the overall look of the of the garden. Sure, because I, I got super big basil plants. My my holy basil plants are like five feet wide. Yes. I'm pretty stoked. Hey, Karen, thank you so much. This has been a great presentation. I've really appreciated it. I have a butterfly garden, but, you know, I learn so much more whenever I uh, listen to, to ex experts like you, and, and uh, I really appreciate all the information you've given us and the, the websites. I've already got them bookmarked, so uh, future plants will, will match the Calscape and the Sierra Club websites. Okay. Nice talking to all of you. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks you. Kim, Karen. Okay. Thanks, Karen.